welcome, welcome here. invitations that I'd like to invite people because it's been such a wonderful experience um, for me or experiencing is to recognize life as love. And so in that we can look at how could that be so in the midst of our world and all that doesn't look like love. Mm. <laughs> it's really <laughs> amazing to uh, hear my own voice like this, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it's all love, including this voice, and it is, right? The stuff that bumps up, the stuff that's uncomfortable, the stuff that uh, your mind would say, no way could this be love. No way. And that's where I'd, if you felt to, I invite you to look and invite life to show you how could this be love. And it's an ongoing exploration of how could this be love when it doesn't look like love. When somebody said um, this morning about the mind um, or what looks like the mind going on and on in the night and being so intense and not being able to switch it off then I would invite you, what about the part that notices that the mind is being intense and notices that there's uh, wanting to, fish, to switch it off, which is obviously bigger than what's happening with the mind. Because every little bit, every experience, every thought, all of it is its own self speaking. The reason I like to invite that it's all love and to look at it that way is because it's easier to open to it if you can just even question that and just this, could it be love? And so I've explored quite a few bits and pieces of a regular life here as a human being uh, of what has been uncomfortable, what has been uh, harsh, what has been even horrific at times, uh, and explored them until I could see how, how is it love. From my own experience, so from myself to myself. So I can't give you how is it love. I can support you to explore what's going on um, to find how is it love. What I can say is that it's only been 100% of the time that when I've supported myself or other people that I've been able to support people to fall into uh, the love that it is no matter what's gone on. And that, of course, is then falling in love. The ongoing invitation, no matter what's happening, from the air, the sound of a child laughing. That all of it's orchestrated perfectly, exactly as it is, to invite you to more of yourself. If it was all comfortable, we wouldn't hear it because the comfy stuff comes and goes and comes and goes, ordinary happenings. And it's those, those uncomfortable bits, that's where love's really saying, hey, there's something here for you, and gets your attention by the discomfort. So what the human collective Predominantly, so far, I like to say so far, because there's always a shifting going on, of bouncing off of that discomfort when it shows up. 
whether it's from the news, whether it's from one, one of our children or moms and dads or whoever, somebody in our life does something and we don't like it. We want to change that out there, or most people up until now uh, would like to change that out there. And that makes sense because we're trained to be field dependent. We're trained to look as if life is what's happening outside of ourselves. <laughs> Welcome. And so in that moment when you're wanting to change any little bit of what's going on outside or in your life, whatever it is, that can be a time to then look inside and see how is this landing in the interior landscape of who you are, which is just as real and just as present. And you know it is, everybody does, when you feel disturbed, when you feel like something's not okay. Because we're energetic. We just are. We're an incredible play of the energy of all that is. And all of us are, equally. The air is not more than what I am, and I am not more than the air. Same as money. It's a great one to explore. And how we empower that. So these disturbances of what doesn't look like love, doesn't feel like love, and how it's, we're sure that it's that other person that's causing this discomfort inside, I would invite you deeply, with all my heart, to feel that discomfort. Find out where it is in the system. You are feeling something if you can say, I am angry. Yes to this anger. Absolutely. Sit down with this. Let it run. Let it fill your being. Let it speak itself because something matters to your heart if anger is here. And the feeling of that, the actual felt sense of the moments as the anger unfurls within you will lead you to what matters in your heart and then we're back to love. Something's important here. Darn right. But it'll lead you to your heart and whatever happens in those moments as it unfurls inside. And then when you decide to take action, if you still do, your action doesn't have the disturbance of what the original energy is. Is that making sense? Right? Because what's happening mostly is people are going along in their life and then something disturbs them and then they take that disturbance and say, no, back out again. And this is the way this energy keeps on living itself keeps self-perpetuating until it can land with us consciously and we can meet that and that goes like, whoa, okay. And just feel how something's not okay. Whatever it is. Feel the not okayness inside and recognize that you're actually already with it if you're perceiving it. You cannot perceive what's going on without it already happening. Because it has to pass through perception. Or awareness, it lands with awareness, and awareness is aware of it, but slightly after the occurrence. So you're already able to be with it, because it's already happening, if you're aware of it. Now that's something I can say, but it's quite different to actually remember that in the moment and go, whoa, I'm already with this, therefore I can be with this, and let your body gently, just gently relax open to whatever's happening. So in the exploration of my own self, uh, or the self that was given here, and uh, all the experiences from all the different moments that coalesce here as a, as a somebody, like this. And it's the same for each person, right? That's what you experience is completely unique to this expression of consciousness that you are right here, right now. And nobody else is hearing it like you are, because nobody else is you. Nobody's experienced everything you've experienced to be able to have it land with you how it is.
You've already been given this space, so you obviously belong here. And then each person being willing to be with the fullness of who you are, both inside and out, more and more consciously, relaxing open to every little bit. There's lots of time. There's only one moment. So there's no rush, no rush whatsoever. It's about relaxing. And when you're not relaxed, noticing. And even the not relaxedness is an indicator of something happening. So there's only win, 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 win. So how is this landing with people? Is there anything that's showing up in your system that says, no way, this can't be love? Whatever it is you'd like to point to. Or that you're hearing inside yourself where you might disagree with what I'm saying. Everybody's with this? <laughs> wow, cool. <laughs> And, you know, really, I'm not really saying anything new, you know. It's like we're all with what's going on inside, even as we're walking around here in this um, festival. Uh, and meeting people and then where we look away because we're not supposed to kind of look or uh, come across somebody and feel drawn and then don't because, oh, they might this and that, right? We're, we're aware of what's going on. I mean, that's all it is. All these little bits of what's going on and then getting more and more comfortable with ourselves and that language, however we hear our own self in each moment and falling in more and more deeply with that instantly includes that which appears outside of us and each other. So it feels pretty alive with you right now. You can remember it quite clearly. Would you like to come up and we can explore this? Beautiful. Thank you. They've just left the building, so... Wonderful. And you can lift this up so you can hear. Gosh. I can hear? <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> Toning. So you're saying that your teenagers are there and you feel this anger. And even when you were speaking, it felt like it was pretty strong that you could feel some of yeah. this inside. Yeah. Okay. And so you're with this right now, or you're... No, no, today has been okay. Yeah. Okay, but, but you can remember. Yeah. Okay, so let's purposefully, consciously bring up this memory. It's whenever they don't do as I ask them to, mm -hmm. in relation with screen time. Mm -hmm. And that's extremely annoying to me, because I have the feeling that the, these devices are just taking them away from life. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be mad if they would do something else, you know, if they wouldn't do as I tell them, but they'd be out playing with their friends, fine. But it's that the device that makes me so angry because I'm losing them to the device and I'm worried about their future, that they can't interact with humans anymore. And so I get so worried and so mad. I get so mad. It's rage. Beautiful. Where is it right now in your body? Where can you find the energy of rage? I think it's in my stomach. Okay. So yes, yes. Now relaxing the awareness, you'll see that awareness floats there. You don't have to actually even focus or give it your intention. Awareness is already here in the belly with this rage, with this energy like this. 
while you breathe. And yes, it's all right to connect with me. And then relaxing the rest of your body around that energy. Almost like the inside of your body can step open a little bit to give that energy more space to be itself. The reach, you mean? Just the rest of you oh. to kind of give it more space. As if okay. That makes sense, yeah. And what's happening? Mm, not much. Is it still here? No. Well, to, a, to an extent. Okay, so what's happening with it now? It's a new now. While you breathe. It's not as much in the foreground now. It's more like somewhere in the background. Not so important. Hmm. Okay, so bring up the memory. They're on the screen time. They're with these gadgets. They're... What happens? Mm. Nothing, no. So you talk about now how you feel about the gadgets. It's not like how it's supposed to be. It's what's real. What's really happening. Mm, I think I'm not reacting in a constructive way to what my, my fears, to, to the situation. Mm -hmm. I'm just reacting to it due to whatever reason in a very intense way. And it's not helpful. Unless it is. I mean, what's happening with the energy inside? While well, you breathe. Mm, I don't know. You mean my energy inside my stomach? Where the rage was. Well, Where I'm just is. letting it, I'm just shooting it out there towards right them. Right now? Oh, no, no. Right now? No. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. But two days ago. Yeah. When? And so how do you feel about that now? Well, I feel it was the wrong thing to do. Okay. And I'm... And I'm sad, and I'm also angry that I can't deal with it in a better way. So where's the sadness? Inside. That I failed? Inside, not what it's about. If there's sadness, you can oh, say, I am. Oh, where the feeling is. Yeah. Um, here, I think. Mm -hmm. And then relax open to that. Just feeling it as it is. Not stopping it, not one, letting it just be itself. <laughs> I don't feel it anymore. Did it get washed away? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the timing, right? I mean, it's true, like all of what's going on, even though the rain comes and you could say, oh, nobody can hear me, but no, it could be part of all of this. Right? We've all experienced moments where the rain has come and played a part and perhaps supported us. Mother Nature comes along. So do you see what I'm pointing to? Because there was still some judgment on what happened, what yes. had happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And even that judgment then to see what it feels like inside first before taking action or even with the yelling to then feel whatever you feel about that mm -hmm. and recognize your own humanness because you didn't do it it just happened yeah. right yeah. it started it's happening before and then you're just getting engaged because of the happenings and that letting them land inside consciously that's what I'm inviting Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So I, I should let that feeling, experience the feeling rather than react immediately with that feeling, like let that rage out. I should just feel it and... Recognize yeah. how you feel. Mm -hmm. in the, and it's closer to the moment that you can. Often what happens is the feeling is there first. The kids come in and before you know it, you're responding in a way that you've known. And it's okay. At any moment you can go, oh, here it is. And then if you can sit down right in that moment <laughs> and be with what is. This is really being with what is. <laughs> and so, you know, maybe this is an opportunity, and you can stay here if you wish, just for a moment or two, to um, give yourself over to the rain right now. Hear the rain and let it come in, to come inside to your inner landscape, and offer up whatever you would like to the rain right now. Whatever occurs to you is the right thing for you. and let the sound of the rain come in to where you are. Because that's where you're hearing it anyway, right where you are. Offer up any habits that you're finished with and that might be finished with you. <laughs> Offer up any feeling of being self-conscious as if you aren't completely connected to all that is. Because you are. I can't even hear you sitting next to you. <laughs> And the part of life that's really handy is gravity. Because right where you are, this chair that you're sitting in is holding you, or your legs where you're standing, the earth is holding you. And we know that this is actually moving molecules, atoms, called cement, or a chair, or even your feet. directly experiencing yourself being held by a chair. How that feels right now is being present. You cannot be experiencing a body being held in a chair without being present in the moment. Bless you. <laughs> So that can be a balancing when you let awareness rest with what's happening in your body can give a nice balancing between listening to what the mind is offering up and listening to what the body experience is offering up. And that's all it is. M most humans, or most of the human collective up until now, has been listening to what the mind is offering up predominantly <coughs> to what the body's been offering up. But both are here and you're aware of both. There is no bad guy. Um, how do you slow yourself down? Like, if I'm in an intensely emotional situation... Thank you.
saying makes complete sense to me. It's just sometimes when I'm in the heat of the moment or if something feels really intense, I'm, it's only on reflection that I know physically how I feel. I find it really hard to still the moment enough to be aware of that. Well, if the moment is really intense, then I invite you to feel the intensity. There's nowhere else to be, right? It's really getting to, I am angry, I am jealous, I am feeling intense. Your voice, your own words will tell you exactly what's going on. I feel soft, I feel irpy. Well, that's where the mindfulness comes in to recognize sometimes you need the reaction to show that there's reaction happening and then you can say, reaction happening. We're all aware of it happening, but it seems like it's got us and it's running itself out and in a way that it is, but the more conscious we are, the more it gets to be known. So consciousness wants to know itself as a reaction. And that already softens it compared to being unconscious of it, where people are just reacting and, it's, and they're not aware that that's just a reaction. They're still believing that they have control over that which appears outside of themselves. There is quite a feeling when people leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is fine, right? People coming and going. I mean, energies are coming and going. Air is coming and going. Our blood is pumping in and out. And there's so much happening here in every single moment. And there's some sort of idea that we're supposed to know how to be with it all. But there's no other you. There's no other me. There's no, there's no other moment like this one. There's no way you can know how to be or what's supposed to be happening. or Like all we can do is settle down in it. This incredible expression of consciousness like this. Consciousness in reaction, consciousness killing another person. If that's what's happening, and then maybe like in war times, that's what, and in some places, war times happening, and what it might feel like, and you know, compassion. Because we're aware when we react. We are, we're aware, like, the lady that came up here, you know, that she didn't like, what about this, when I feel this rage? Well, who sits down and feels the rage when we've been told, don't be angry, don't be sad? It's too late. We're already angry, we're already sad. It's already here. But sitting in with it and being brave enough to let it unfurl inside, however it does, and let it run while well, you're just kind of there as awareness going, whoa, what is this? And you won't know what it is until after it unfurls. Which is handy to know because then you can say to yourself, understanding comes after. Because the mind will still want to be involved and try to say, oh, it's this or it's that or whatever. And it might be layers as this experience showed that first there was rage and then there was sadness and then there was an attempt to change oneself because maybe it didn't feel so right. But then you get to sit down with how does it feel to want to change yourself? What does that really feel like? And let your body open to the energy of what's already here as a human being. So the side effect of this is an embodied human being, as well as a clarification of consciousness, so the wakefulness. So it's kind of a two-fold play of allowing this, it's actually more than a two-fold play because it's also becoming more and more harmless. The closer and closer that you feel that reaction, 
and recognize reaction happening and then settle down, what does it feel like to be in reaction? If that's what you can name, any moment. Sitting down with exactly as you are, as a human being, is consciousness sitting down with his or herself just like this. And then this becomes more and more lived, more and more alive, more and more sort of, I like to say, chubby with the moment. And time does expand. Because how do you quantify a moment? How many moments is there in five minutes? One. <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> sort of. Right? It's an ongoing moment spilling itself like this. Spilling and spilling. It's complete movement. It looks like stillness sometimes and it's impossible. There's no way we know from atoms vibrating here that it's not what it appears to be. It's this spaciousness and consciousness wanting to know itself like this, like this, like this, like this, because this is what's happening. Any other questions here? Or how is this falling? Or Did that answer your question? Yeah? Awareness doesn't go away. You can see that with yourself. What is it that's hearing this voice right now or feeling your hands holding each other? <laughs> if they are. Your feet being held by shoes or barefoot. So it's settling into exactly what you're experiencing more and more deeply. So is there really any, no questions about, you know, how Donald Trump is love? <laughs> or anything like that? You know, where in the world, in our world today, there seems to be a lot that's not really all that okay, right? And it's true, it's not okay. And it is as it is. Can we open to it anyway and find the love of it? Because what happens is it lands with us and we can either go with it and let it land, therefore diffuse this little bit of the energy of what is, of what's not okay in the world. Just letting it land, because we're already aware of it. So we, there's something we can uh, be with together here, if you're up for it. Um, how many people can remember in this moment something that's really disturbing that you've heard on the news? And it can come from any time but this, that there's some sort of disturbance inside. Just if you put your hand up, if you've, there's something that you can remember in this moment. Something really, right? Okay, beautiful. So now allowing awareness to be aware of yourself being held in the chair. Just now. And then also remember what was disturbing. What did you hear? What was not okay? And then really let yourself fall in with this disturbance, what you feel inside. And how incredible. It's not okay. We can feel every little bit of what's not okay. We're open beings. And just breathe. Feel the chair. It's holding you here 100% unconditionally. And let your body relax even more open. And seeing that you can be with this stuff. Because you already are. 
just letting it land, letting it unfurl inside. You can see where the harmlessness comes from, right? If we can let it land inside, however it does. What's happening with people? Are you able to feel that? Is it making sense? Or is there some part, anyone who's saying no, no? Because even the no, not this, this can't be it. The last part, sorry? Should we not be doing something about making it better? If there's something in the news that you don't like that is offensive, can we just let it happen? Or should we not be fighting like people are fighting for climate change and things now? If we just allow it to happen. That's the best possible thing that can happen is we allow it and feel how horrible it is inside ourselves. Right? If there's some action to take after we've sat down with that, there might be, but it won't be a fight anymore. It'll, it'll transform itself into a way that you can participate because your heart feels to be in that, and then it's love because your heart feels to be part of it. Right? So the not okayness gives us the flagging. Something's going on here. And what people have tended to do is to then take that fight back out there. And that some change can come, but not as much as sitting down with it because we're so completely not separate. Each person who sits down with the dastardly stuff and lets it unfurl inside and feels how they can be with it and how empowering that is and whatever it is each person sits with these energies, you, there'll be some sort of understanding of yourself when that when you're sitting with this stuff, with these expressions. So there's more understanding for yourself, more understanding for the world, and then from that place taking action. But because we're in this together, until there isn't any thing that's not okay happening, there isn't nuclear weapons and things that are being made and choices that are pretty much against humanity or against our earth. We can feel it because we're in this together. We know when it's not okay. But can we sit down with what it feels like when not okay happens and really let it tear us up inside? And that meets the energy. It gives it a place to land and be accepted. That's the side effect of acceptance, true acceptance. Here comes the rain again. <laughs> and I'm only inviting it's not a should, it's not a have to, it's not do this, it's an invitation. Just an invitation from what I've found with working with myself first and then with thousands of people over the years. It's, I've been offering this way of being with ourselves more and more deeply, more and more real. more and more being with reality as it is. More and more responsibility. What is responsibility? It's being able to respond and respond to reaction if that's what's happening and then sitting down with, ah, reaction. 
as soon as we want something out there to change and try to change it, we're mucking around. So it's like when you're actually, when you've been in an, in an emergency, like a car accident or what, you know, has everybody experienced when the moment gets really, everything slows down, it goes into slow motion and your body, you just do what you need to do. You'll notice that there's no thought going on. The emergency just happens. Well, that's how all of life is, really. That's how it, how it really is. And you'll notice that you respond without thinking. So we don't have to work at how are we going to be. We already are. And we all know that. We already are. So it's sort of sitting back. I like to invite people to bring in the awareness of your own spine in any moment, wherever you are. Because your spine is just behind your heart. It's behind the main part of who you are and instantly the front part of you is open if awareness is resting with the spine. It may not feel open, it feels how it feels. Nobody's doing it. You're becoming aware of it when you do. You didn't do any of it, so you can't undo it. So responsible isn't about being a better you. You cannot be a better you. You can't, you know, you can't. from where I sit, this incredible expression of, you know, human beings, they're, they're little, I can't say, even if I say that, everything I say can be cancelled in a sense of, of its own play of consciousness like this, but that we get to be conscious of what's happening, of wearing a coat, or not, feeling the cold, feeling the heat, feeling heaviness, feeling depression. <coughs> Is anybody experienced depression here? Would you like me to speak a little bit about that or not? Yes? So I found in my own exploration, it's something that has run in my family is depression, has been up until now. So you notice my words, I'll put things in the past because then that leaves an openness of possibility because our words have strength. So there has been depression that runs, has run in my family of origin. And so it's something that, that comes up. It doesn't mean that it never comes up anymore, but where it does come up, I can, if I can find any moment where I say, oh, I feel a little depressed, Right away, in that moment, I can stop whatever I'm doing and sit down and see where is energy being pressed down? Where is energy being depressed? And then just feel that. Relax open and feel whatever that is. You're allowing yourself to feel it. Usually softens whatever's pressing down. And then you can just feel whatever it is. Let it unfurl just as its own self. It's not supposed to look one way or the other, and you don't get to know before it unfurls. That's, that's the hard part. It's just recognizing its energy that's here. It's already happened. I am with it because it's already happened, because I'm feeling it. In that case, you're already with it. You're already able to be with it. So as scary as it might feel to be with the unknown, you know, and you might be more used to feeling it as depression and then trying to get rid of the depression and hoping the depression doesn't come back, which makes it come back. Any push away, it's physics. Any push away encapsulates the energy and keeps it here. So that's where any push away, perfect. It's not wrong. It helps you f to find the energy that's happening. The push away. So then you can go like this. And let yourself feel it. Exactly as it is, the energy, you yourself, in expression like this. It's 
Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm speaking about this from having explored this myself. I know it's not easy, and most of humanity isn't doing this yet, isn't sitting down with oneself and these energies. There's a collective thing, and it, and it is the masculine part of ourself that's attempting to fix what is. Can't be fixed, I mean, heavens. Like even a, a flat tire on the car, you know, it looks like we're going to be fix it, but really what happens is the car stops, we see that there's an empty tire, and we are responding to an empty tire, a deflated tire, and we go moment by moment and we know how to fix that. And it looks, the whole thing, like we fixed it, but really all we've done is gone on with the actual expression of consciousness as it unfolds as a flat tire and we respond to that. Right? Being here, I know that, uh, you know, this uh, festival and Mike uh, having brought it into its expression of all of us being together like this. And somebody spoke uh, earlier, what about planning things? And really what happened is Somehow, I, it occurred to Mike to send me a note, and then I had a yes for that. But whether it actually happened, whether it actually gels, I don't know. And I talk with other people in various places, and they say, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. they want to do a weekend here and do a weekend there. And somebody else comes and says, I'll pay for your flight. And here we are together, right? All these moments that came to this one, it's a domino effect of moments. And it always is, and it's always the 100% of the 100% of, of consciousness playing itself out like this. And every moment's like this. It's come from everywhere. Right here, like this. Magical. And dastardly. Magically dastardly, sometimes. So it is, you know, it's a little sacred and a little bit serious to ask you to sit down with horror if that's what happens, if you're watching some of the films from Syria and see all sorts of atrocities. I'm not saying, you know, let, let's let them run because it's all just a happening. I'm saying let's feel it. Let's be our human self that knows when something's not okay and dare to feel how not okay it is and feel that inside before doing anything about it or <coughs> taking that energy back out into the field. Land with it right here, right now, like this. And like this again. And like this newly. And like this, newly. And just to speak a little bit about um, the journey of the interior landscape and how things today, you know, we might find that um, maybe teenagers come along and do something that sparks some rage inside. And, you know, it, it may not even be just about today. It might be about uh, our own childhood and how things happened that weren't okay. And before that, our, our parents, things happened and weren't okay. And their parents before that, and our, our ancestry, or even in our collective, um, you know, the Canadian-ishness of, of, of this expression, you know, whatever's traveled on to be in this moment and what we've been given from our ancestry to be with. And how we can, yes, we can meet these energies because they're here with us. Not all at once, just as they arrive. It's kind of like the buck stops here, if it does. If it shows up, it means you're able. 
If it feels really horrible and uncomfortable, it means you're able. It's okay. You're already feeling it, so it's okay to rest open and see what's really, really going on by feeling it. And then the understanding will come after you feel the energy exactly as it is. Like this. Is that roomy? Like this, exactly like this. So to kind of go along with the topic of this talk, which is uh, our, what is it again? <laughs> um, Yes, an invitation to love. So it's not like you're applying loving, but daring to sit and let it unfurl inside is the most loving action you can take. Because we're not separate and you represent humanity exactly as you are right here. You are the pinnacle of this moment exactly as you are and we are not separate anywhere in the world if I call home right now, we're in the same moment, no matter what time it is, anywhere. We're all breathing the same air and exhaling into the same atmosphere that we're all breathing. We're sharing this. We're sharing this, spoke, this moment of now. So every bit that you sit with, you do so for every single person on this planet. And hey, it goes for the enjoyable stuff too. How deeply dare you enjoy your life? It can make all the difference in the world as somebody who's maybe in that war experience and could find maybe a easier time of it because you're willing to enjoy so deeply what life has to offer because it's both ends the depths of what feels dark and the depths of what feels light. But no matter what, it's always an invitation from love itself and you can fall in with this. Falling in and falling in deeper and deeper. Is there any other any questions at this point in this moment? Is that your hand? No? Oh, I could just see part. I didn't know if it was a hand or a itchy leg. <laughs> it happens apparently. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, resistance then I would invite you to feel resistance. As soon as you can say, I, I, I'm resisting that, then there'll be the energy of resistance within, whatever you can name. Sometimes there'll be, I don't feel anything. Well, then let's feel what not anything feels like. Sometimes it feels like numbness. <coughs> Sometimes nothingness. That can be quite interesting. <laughs> Out of nothing we have arrived to this moment, and out of nothing we return. That's what makes this moment so sacred and so valuable in its own way, but not to make it more important. You can't make a moment more important than its own self. It just is. But we can relax more and more deeply, open to exactly what's happening, exactly as it is, exactly as we are as human beings, all of our bits and pieces of learning to enjoy life more. Reacting sometimes, because we're human. Right? The habits of all of humanity will rise within us. So there, there's not a wrongness. It's that how can, how can you respond? How do you respond?
Is there any more questions here? We have about five minutes here. Yeah. So the more we stay in that space that you just took us into kindly. That the you more, allowed yeah. yourself to fall into. I'm yes. inviting you. I cannot do. Yeah. But I understand. You. You're welcome. So the less there is a need to take any action, say anything. So how are we, like what actions can we take? Whatever comes up, right? So it's like I like to say, for me, I needed to renounce my life, and I did because I did. But other people, they don't. The moment's always here. If you need to go somewhere, you do, or you don't. All possibilities. So the bladder gets full. We know to take the body over to the bathroom and release. Right? Each moment unfurls into its next. So there's still action included. Of course, right? Because it's a, it's a play, it's an onward play of its own self. It's just inviting you to relax back into it, relax into your own spine, relax into being held here by the chair, by the air, by your thoughts. The mind is not a problem. It's just noticing if there's a dominance there, coming in to listen to what the physical landscape feels like it, letting balance come this way. If you feel like your attention and awareness is out in the field, bring, the, bring that back in. So there's all these different directions, seeing what's happening for the most part, what's dominating, and go the other direction from that. And when you do that, there's a balancing of the energies between the mind and the body from the inside and the outside. And all of it becomes lighter and lighter and no separation if the inside and the outside are felt simultaneously. There's no separation from what is. This way, from the mind to the body, again, as if there's one or the other, becomes lighter and lighter and then that disappears. That's what enlightenment is a happening. It's not a place to get to. It's lightening. The whole of humanity is becoming lighter and lighter and lighter, and we can go along with it more and more consciously, including all the stuff that at first we may want to change so we can find it. That encapsulates the energy so we can find it, and then relaxing open to feel it as energy, as we already are. Do you like a couple toning sounds to kind of put the top of the sandwich on these moments we've been <laughs> sharing together and make it a real tasty snack? <laughs> so allowing, let's, I like to set an intention that these sounds, there'll be three sounds or so about, and then a little bit of silence after. Um, the sounds then, let these sounds support you to falling in love <laughs> with yourself in all the various ways that you are as a human being here. How does that sound? You have a yes for that? Okay, so then now you've said yes, you get to relax. So about three sounds and then a little bit of quiet and then we're done.
thank you for joining me today. And there's going to be a satsang tomorrow at Mamati's, if you feel drawn to join us there. <laughs>